there's a woman who wants to get divorced, how does she make a decision? Did I get that right pretty much? Yeah, pretty, pretty good, yeah. I, I tell everybody who's contemplating divorce, have, have, you, have you intensively tried real love? To most, if people are about to get divorced, I ask them, have you done an intervention? I don't piddle. At that point, reading a book, you're way too late. Can you imagine? We already got two people who hate each other. Why don't you read a book where you both describe each other's faults? <laughs> Actually, let's, why don't you just each buy a gun? <laughs> so, have you done an intervention? Well, I'm not sure we can afford one. Hmm. Have you looked up what divorces cost? because you're about to lose half of everything you've got. And I don't care who people do interventions with. There are quite a few people, you call and ask me, who are now doing interventions for other people who are being taught how to do them. And some people who actually do them quite well, who charge way less than I do. Um, I'm happy to refer people to those people. <laughs> I'm so busy, I don't need more work. So I have no hesitation to go, here's, what can you afford? I can send you to somebody. But if two people are about to divorce, why would you quit before you've done the one thing that would work? You know? I keep trying to climb this mountain and, and I just keep failing and failing and failing. Have you ever tried, you know, the right foot gear and ropes and you know chocks and anchors and have you ever tried any of that no <laughs> it, it's the old joke because i love chainsaws of the guy who buys a chainsaw he's never had a chainsaw before and he takes it into the store and he says i worked all day with this stupid thing and it's no better than my buck saw hand saw like i said well let's, let's see what's wrong with it and so he pulls the cord and the chainsaw goes Rum! and the guy goes what's that noise <laughs> you actually have to turn the chainsaw on before it works until you've tried unconditional love in your relationship with either your spouse or a child or a student or whoever you haven't really done anything you haven't done anything and that answers the question that people often ask me. Well, I just saw a couple recently. They were done. Been married for 12 years, um, fighting, hating each other, living in opposite ends of the house for the last five years. Um, paperwork filed for the divorce, all that stuff. Well, why not try the one thing that works? We've, we've, been, we've worked so hard for 12 years. You know, it turns out that it doesn't matter how many years you worked so hard um, climbing a mountain if you've been climbing the wrong one. They've never had what it takes to make a happy marriage, never. So I don't get any credit for trying really hard with two by fours and 16 penny nails and a hammer to build 747 in my backyard. I don't get any credit at all. Well, he tried really hard. No, you have to have the right tools and a knowledge of, and it goes on and on, engineering, metallurgy, fluid dynamics, blah, 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 blah. This is the one thing that works. Somebody once asked me, so what's the incidence of success with people who come for interventions? And I said, I don't know, um, 20%, which sounds low. Uh, but the people that I see um, are at the end of the, their rope. I see people who've been to 30 therapists, um, 20 marriage therapists. Um, they've been everywhere. And conventional wisdom would say they have a chance of probably less than 1% with traditional therapy. And I thought, mm, 20%. This is a reflection of the fact that you tend to remember the people who take up the most time. Uh, so I did three years of research. 80%. Hmm. What does that prove? That what works, works. That if two people are willing to learn how to be unconditionally loving, any marriage can work. No kidding. <laughs>